we're asked to evaluate the limit if possible. We have the limit of the function as x comma y approaches three comma three. Notice at the point three comma three, the denominator is equal to the square root of three minus the square root of three, which is zero, and therefore the function has discontinuity at the point three comma three. This does not mean the limit does not exist. It just means we cannot determine the limit by performing direct substitution. However, we can often perform algebraic techniques to change the function so that we can then determine the limit by performing direct substitution. Let's begin by looking at the graph of the given function as well as the point three comma three. So here we see the graph of the surface as well as the point three comma three. Notice how the graph does verify the function does have discontinuity at the point three comma three. But again, this does not mean the limit does not exist. As we approach the, as we approach the point from various paths along the function, it does appear as if the limit may exist. So what we're gonna be able to do is change the form of the function by factoring and then simplifying or by rationalizing the denominator, which will then give us a new function that behaves just like this function, except it does not have discontinuity at the point three comma three, which means we can then determine the limit by performing direct substitution. So the simplified function that we are going to find will look like this. Notice how this function does not have discontinuity at the point three comma three. And again, it's much easier to see now as we approach the point from all different paths, we would be approaching the same function value. And again, using this function, we can determine the limit by performing direct substitution. So going back to our limit, let's first change the function by rationalizing the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of square root x minus square root y, which is the square root of x plus the square root of y. So again, beginning with the original function, we will multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of x plus the square root of y. Next, we multiply the denominator. Square root of x times square root of x is equal to x. And then we have plus the square root of xy minus the square root of xy, which is zero. And then we have negative square root y times positive square root y, which gives us minus y. And now in the numerator, let's go ahead and factor out the x from x squared minus xy, which gives us x times the quantity x minus y and then we still have times the square root of x plus the square root of y. But notice in this form, we can see we have a common factor of x minus y between the numerator and denominator. So simplifying, x minus y divided by itself simplifies to one. Simplifying, we have x times the quantity square root of x plus the square root of y. So the limit of this function is the same as the limit of the original function, but notice this function does not have discontinuity at the point three comma three. So this is one method we can use to change the function so that we can then find the limit by performing direct substitution. I also wanna show a second method which involves factoring. So again, starting with the original function, let's begin by factoring the numerator, which is x times the quantity x minus y. Denominator stays the same. And now in the numerator, we can think of x as the square of the square root of x and y as the square of the square root of y. So let's write the numerator as x times the quantity, the square of the square root of x minus the square of the square root of y over the same denominator. Notice now the numerator is a difference of squares that can be factored. So factoring the numerator further, we have x times the square root of x plus the square root of y times the square root of x minus the square root of y all over the same denominator. But notice now the numerator and denominator share a common factor of the square root of x minus the square root of y. Simplifying, notice we get the same result as above of x times the quantity the square root of x plus the square root of y. Whichever method we use, we now know the original limit is equal to the limit of this new simplified function. So again, the original limit is equal to the limit of x times the square root of x plus the square root of y as x comma y approaches three comma three. So now performing direct substitution, we just have three times the quantity 
the square root of three plus the square root of three, which is equal to three times two square root three, which is equal to six square root three. So the limit of the original function as x comma y approaches three, three is equal to six square root three. I hope you found this helpful.